I, it was so we've got perfect. a topic, which is how to get started in game development. What does that even mean? I was asking you two minutes ago in terms of, Tim, what are we talking about? What does it even mean to get started? Do you mean, how do you go from zero to something? Do you mean how to launch your first game? Do you mean how to get a job? Do you mean how to go from being just kind of terrible to being amazing? What, what do we mean by this topic? So I think we can actually tailor it to everybody that's in the chat right now. So we put a, a poll link in chat if you're watching us live. If you could go ahead and click on that and fill out the poll of kind of where you're at in your game dev journey, because I think once we know that, we can kind of help uh, people wherever they're at in their game dev journey, if they've started, if they haven't started, if they're at a project, if they've done a game jam, wherever they're at. So click on that straw poll link. I'll post it one more time and, uh, and, and tell us where you're at. But I think uh, getting started is is one of those things that, yeah, it does have a lot of meanings, like you were saying, Rick. Like, oh, I've, I've already written a line of code, therefore I've started. Or like, I've already launched a game on Steam, therefore I've started. Um, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So if we've got a good understanding of kind of where everybody's at, um, if you want to share my screen real quick. Yep. We've got the votes coming in. Um. Looks like most people have finished smaller projects or game jams, uh, or they've watched videos or taken courses, but they don't have a personal project. I don't know. Look at this live data incoming. We're fancy. Crazy. Look at you with the technology, huh? Genius. I know. I can't get the intro right, but I got the technology right. Dude, you you not maybe not be a talker, but you'd be a doer. <laughs> That's just as good in life. You know how I be. You be you be good. You be you. Yeah. So. So it looks like the majority of people have watched videos or taken courses, but they don't have a personal project. So I think for getting started in game dev, for what a lot of uh, the specific people that are watching today, it means getting started with their first actual game outside of courses or outside of YouTube. Um, and then right, a bigger chunk- I turned you off. We're so professional here this morning. <laughs> So a bigger, uh, another big chunk of that too is probably people that have uh, have done smaller stuff, right? Uh, started on a bunch of projects, probably have shiny object syndrome, probably have done game jams and stuff, but they've never actually finished and released something too. So we've got we've got that's like sixty percent of the people listening here, and um, we've got a few people that have finished smaller projects or game jams. Which go, you guys. Um, we should note since it's kind of relevant right now, it's not really uh, you know uh, us tooting our own horn here, but the, the Game Dev TV Game Jam is coming up May 20th, and it's May 20th through the 30th. It's two weekends long, uh, plus a whole week in between, and it's got all kinds of stuff. And there's a free Game Jam starter kit if you guys want to go ahead and grab that uh, on there as well, but also you get a free course if you submit a game. So the people that haven't finished, if you've always been like, oh, there's no reason for me to finish, well, now there is, because you actually get a free course when you finish and you submit. Um, but yeah. And you, you know, so, a lot of it, a lot of getting started, I think is just having the courage to be bad. And I'm teaching my kids at the moment, how to, how to create things in scratch. And I'm working on a scratch course as well. So if any of you have kids or people who are new to programming, uh, for me to be perfectly honest, this is a bit of a secret here, Tim, but I've got, got into scratch. And, uh, if you don't know, scratch is a web-based, uh, drag and drop block of visual scripting language. And, uh, a lot of it, when I was first looking at it, I didn't know what to do, even though I understood the, the fundamental concepts, like, you know, what a loop is and what an if statement is and variables. I understood those concepts, but just to get there and think off the top of your head, okay, I want something to happen over and over. And then when you bump into something, I want it to stop and play a sound effect. Even though I've created that in Unity or in Unreal, I understand the mechanisms of it. There's still that process of saying, but I need to do this on my own without going and looking up a tutorial, without going to the help document or, you know, without copying something I've done before. And I think it's that stage of transitioning from now I have to do it on my own. That's really difficult. And this is why I've really enjoyed scratch because it's the concepts are very simple. Once you understand the loop, once you've got it, and then you can use it in a lot of places. And so one thing I'd say, if you're starting out, this rant is leading somewhere, by the way, if you're starting out is, Go find some really, really simple things and learn them by doing them over and over and get really good at those. So you've now got them in your toolkit as I can do that. So for example, I'm always going on about collision, like collision, have something bump into something, have something trigger something, have something when they collide, a thing happens because so many aspects, so many game mechanics 
um, are born from that concept of, of collision. So if you know how to do that, whether it's Unity or Unreal or Scratch or, uh, or Godot or Godot, see, people seem to be calling it Godot lately, but anyway, whatever engine it's in, once you master that concept, you know it, and hopefully you're not forever. And then you can start thinking, okay, I'm making a game. How do I do this? It's a little bit scary. I don't know what's going on. Okay, I know how to do collision. I know how to do player movement. I know how to do, um, f for example, having having some sort of variable so that I have a score and I have a timer. Okay, just with those four things that I mentioned there, you can make so many games and have them so interesting and so much fun. So build upon it a little bit by little bit and don't do what a lot of beginners do which is look at it and say okay a couple of things i know but wow look at all these things i have no idea about like there's gonna always gonna be things you don't have any idea about so don't focus on that focus on what you know and make a game that fits within what you know